Hey everyone, it's Christelle from Promo Crafters, and today we're going to be talking about cowslip primrose or Primula varis. It's an edible and medicinal plant that grows throughout temperate Europe and Western Asia. It's very common here on the French Swiss border. It's a perennial plant, meaning that it lives for several years and it's in the primrose family or the primulaceae family. So today I'm going to be covering cowslip's defining characteristics, its lookalikes, and we'll make a flower infusion for respiratory inflammation. And if you want to learn more about the culinary uses and its medicinal properties, then make sure to check out our herbal remedies and foraging course. So you'll notice cowslip primrose in bloom in mid-February to mid-April, oftentimes on lawns or in prairies, and they reach about 25 centimeters high. The yellow flowers are in an umbel shape, and all the inv individual flower stalks start off at the same level, and the yellow flowers all curve to one side, and in the corolla there are five bright yellow petals that are fused together forming a tube, and if you look inside there are orange marks on each petal, and the calyx is made of five fused sepals, and they form a toothed tube that protects the petals. So cowslip primrose has a rosette of leaves, meaning that the leaves are arranged in a circle at ground level, and the leaves are 5 to 15 centimeters long and slightly furry. And the leaf's petiole, which is the stalk that joins the leaf to the stem, is long, and the leaves are thinner towards the base and get larger in an oval shape. And they're toothed with protruding veins, and the underside is a lighter green. And finally, you'll also notice that the peduncle is slightly soft and furry if you look really closely. So before moving on to lookalikes, I want to remind you that this short video is not your complete guide to foraging. Um, please be mindful of contaminated sites, of over-harvesting, of lookalikes in your particular region, and always, always be 100% certain of your plant identification. So in Europe here, there are two possible lookalikes that are both primroses. There's the oxlip, whose flowers are much larger than cowslip primrose, and there's the common primrose, where, which, you know, unlike cowslip and oxlip, the flowers are not in an umbel. So the good news is all of these are perfectly edible, and if you're interested in their medicinal properties, cowslip and oxlip have the same properties. So while cowslip primrose is generally safe to consume, the leaves, the flowers, and the roots, it does contain saponins. In rare cases, it does cause GI problems. So to avoid this, make sure not to eat the leaves in large quantities. And when it's applied topically, cowslip can also occasionally cause allergies like red skin from uh, er erythema or dermatitis. Okay, let's move on to the infusion for respiratory inflammation. And of course, remember that none of what I'm sharing is medical advice. So cowslip has been used for respiratory problems like a reproductive cough or bronchitis, for example, because it's an expectorant. So when you take the roots or flowers with the calyx internally, the saponicides content irritates the mucous membranes and makes your bronchial secretions more viscous and it helps you get out the mucus by coughing. So today I'm simply going to be making a cowslip infusion by pouring boiling water over the fresh cowslip flowers with the calyx, letting it infuse for about 20 minutes. And use about one tablespoon of fresh flowers per cup of water. And once it's ready, have your cup of tea. You can have several cups of this tea per day. All right, I hope that you loved this foraging video and keep your eyes open for more foraging videos coming up.